بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We begin our program or our class with Hadith number three hundred and thirty in the series of Umdatul Ahkam, and the brother would. Go ahead, please, and read the hadith for us. It is reported on the authority of Abu Dhar that he heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying, "Whoever is called to someone other than his father knowingly has committed an act of kufr, and whoever makes a claim of what is not his is not amongst us, and his abode is in the fire. And he who labelled anyone with unbelief or called him the enemy of Allah, and he was not in fact so, it would rebound on him." This hadith. Has three topics. The one that is related to us is the first one, because the other two are not related to the book of marriage, to the book of calling your descendants to be yours, or claiming that they are not yours, accusing them, which is related to al-liyan, etc. So the first issue the Prophet is telling us, alayhi salatu wasalam, is that whoever. Is called to someone other than his father knowingly. He has committed an act of kufr, and without going into deep details, the hadith clearly states it is not permissible for a person to be called after anyone except his father. So, if your father's name is Ali, and you decide to call yourself, for example, Asim ibn Ahmed. You've changed the name of your father from Ali into Ahmed. This is a major sin. Not only that, the Prophet said, "Ali Sallam, he had committed an act of kufr." Now, this by itself is an issue of debate among scholars. When saying that it is an act of kufr, does this mean that a person who does this had nullified his Islam? He's a kafir now. It's a long, heated debate. The most authentic opinion. That there is a difference between the Prophet saying "Ali Sallam kufr" and saying "Al kufr," the kufr. When it's unidentified, no identification article is used, such as "the." This means that this is not a major kufr. This is a minor kufr, and you know that in Aqida we have major hypocrisy that puts a person in hell forever, and we have minor hypocrisy. Such as lying, cheating, breaking a promise. We have major shirk, such as prostrating and worshiping idols, and we have minor shirk, such as saying, "By Muhammad, I will not do this," swearing other than Allah. So, likewise, we have major kufr that nullifies Islam. If a person says, "I don't believe in the existence of angels," he's kafir. If a person says, "I believe that there is a messenger and a prophet after," The Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad. He's a kafir, and there is minor kufr, and this is not the right platform to discuss it. But just to remind you, I know that you know this, Inshallah. Such as when the Prophet says Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Sibabu al-Mu'mini fusuq," swearing and cursing a mu'min is a, a sin. Waqitaluhu kufr, and fighting him is kufr, meaning that if I fight him, I become a kafir. No, Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Hujurat. وَإِنْ طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَتَتَلُوا Allah described them as believers. If two factions of the believers fought against one another, Allah tells us to try to reconcile between them. Now this means that this kufr is not major; it is minor. Likewise, the Prophet tells Ali Sallam the women, "O oh, women, pay for charity because I have seen you the majority of hellfire." Women stood and objected. Why? And the Prophet said, "Because of your kufr." And they inquired again, "Do we make kufr of Allah?" And he said, "No. You make kufr of good behavior or good attitude towards your husband. If your husband is good to you all year round, and he makes one mistake, you say we have not seen anything good of you. So this is kufr, but it does not nullify a person's Islam. It is kufr of gratitude. You're not thankful. You're not grateful. So this is." The opposite of being thankful and grateful. So this hadith, this is the most authentic opinion. It is not an indication that it nullifies Islam, but rather it reduces 
the iman and it's a major sin. Now, the other topic is claiming what's not yours. And this is not the right time to discuss it, but I'll just briefly, when I say that I have this and I have that and I'm lying, just so that people are impressed with me. It's like a co-wife. The Prophet was asked about this. A woman came and she said, if I say to the other co-wife that my husband gave me this and that and he did not, just to break her heart and make her feel jealous. The Prophet said, والسلام, whoever claims something that is not his, as if he's wearing two garments of falsehood, of zur. So this is not permissible. And do we have people like this among the Muslims? A lot. And I'm afraid that it also can be part of this hadith when you wear a fake watch. If you wear a fake watch that originally costs 100,000 euros, but you buy it for 10 rupees, fake. But then you boast about it and how are you? I'm fine. So what are you doing? You're trying to impress people with something that is not yours. Or to try to pretend that you're a hafiz or you're a scholar. And you speak like what people say, oh, a scholar, so-and-so. And you're not. You barely know how to pray. So a part can fall under this. And this is not the time to discuss it. And the third one is a very dangerous one, is when people label others by saying, you're a kafir. And he's not a kafir. He's a Muslim. Or you're the enemy of Allah. And he's a righteous and pious person. The Prophet tells us, alayhi salatu wasalam, that whoever does this, then it will go back to him if the other one is not actually an enemy of Allah or a kafir. Let's go back to the first one which deals with our topic. Calling someone after someone who's not his father is a major sin. We find this unfortunately in lots of the Muslim talking about non-Muslims. Non-Muslims, they would probably don't care about what we think and believe. I'm addressing only the Muslims. And a lot of the sisters, when they get married in foreign countries, they change their family name. Some of them change their father's name. So after being named by Fatima bint Muhammad as siddiqi for example, all of a sudden she marries someone and she changes her name into Fatima al-Muhammadi. Okay, where is the siddiqi The family name is gone. Okay, what's her father's name? A lot of them, they're called after their husbands as if she's her daughter and this is totally prohibited it is completely forbidden and not only that's a major sin he had committed an act of kufr the prophet says salam, which means that it's not something it's only on the paper therefore you are not entitled or allowed to change your father's name even if you revert to islam someone's name is christina and her father's name is george and the family name is Richardson. She reverted to Islam. Is she obliged to change the name Christina? No, it is not the servant of Jesus or something. It's a name. Is she recommended? It's better that you change your first name into a Muslim name, but it is totally permissible to keep yours. Her father's name is George, and George is not a Muslim name. So she says, no, I'd like to be Christina, the daughter of Muhammad. He said, nope, this is haram. Okay, daughter of Abdullah, again, this is haram. You have to keep your father's name. This is a must. So this name cannot be changed unless it is, for example, her father's name is the servant of Jesus. Then yes, we change it. The servant of Zeus, the servant of Venus. Anything that is servant other than Allah, you change this if it's your father's name. And again, this is not a must. Because there were a lot of the companions who kept their names. The Prophet's name, Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib, the servant of Al Muttalib. Al Muttalib is not a name of Allah, but it is also not a name of a God. Al Muttalib was the grand uncle of the Prophet ﷺ. When his nephew came to Medina, they thought that he was his slave. So they called him Abd Al Muttalib meaning the slave of his uncle, not knowing that he was his nephew. But this is a different topic. So, in short, the names must not be changed or altered at all. The first name, yes. If his name is the servant of Jesus or the servant of Muhammad, it has to be changed. 
Moving on to a new chapter that deals with breastfeeding or suckling and the rules that govern this. We have hadith number 331. So who would be kind enough to read it? Yes, sir. Narrated by Ibn Abbas, Razi Allah ta'ala anha, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said about Hamza's daughter, I am not legally permitted to marry her as relation through suckling are treated like blood relation. She is the daughter of my brother through suckling. Okay. Now, this hadith is relating to the issue of ar or suckling. What are the rules governing this? This, inshallah, is what we will know after the break. So, stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Just before the break, we were discussing the rules or some of them pertaining the hadith number 331 where the Prophet ﷺ was commenting on marrying his cousin, the daughter of his uncle Hamza. So the Prophet ﷺ, someone suggested to him and it was suggested by Ali ibn Abi Talib, his cousin, that as long as this girl is unattended, unmarried, why don't you marry her, O Prophet of Allah? So the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam that the rulings that come through suckling are exactly like the rulings that come from blood. That means kinship. So if a person suckles or is breastfed by a woman, then this woman becomes his mother, his foster mother, and all those who are related to her are relating to him as her son. Why this is resulted from the milk? So the milk itself, when a person suckles from a woman, this milk helps to grow his bones and his flesh. So he becomes as if he is her own. Are there any conditions? Yes, there are conditions. Among the conditions, one, that these, it has to be within the age of two years of the child. Not only that, it's an issue of dispute, but the most authentic opinion is that if the child has stopped suckling before two years of age, and now he's dependent on food rather than milk, in this case, it's over again. It cannot be counted. Why? This is the opinion of some scholars, because he is not dependent on the milk, which means that his bones and his flesh would not grow from it. There are a number of hadiths where the Prophet says, alayhi salatu wasalam, that suckling is when a person is hungry. That means that when the infant is dependent, he is not able to live except on milk. And this can happen when a child is like 15 months old, and then his mother stops feeding him, and she gives him food, and he's dependent on food rather than on milk. The numbers of sucklings also are defined in Sharia. Ah. How many? In the beginning, it, there were 10. So the child should suckle 10 times, 10 meals from his suckling mother, foster mother, to become her son. This was revealed in the Quran and it was abrogated, meaning that the ruling has changed. Abrogation in the Quran is divided into two types or three. One, when Allah Azza wa Jal abrogates the ruling and also the recitation. So the whole ayah is taken out. Okay, what about the ruling? Is it halal or haram? Even the ruling is taken out. Example, this. Aisha said, may Allah be pleased with her. It was revealed in the Quran that 10 sucklings, 10 meals makes him a son to that woman. This was abrogated into how many? Into five sucklings. So the ten sucklings were mentioned in the Quran. Now they are removed, abrogated. And not abrogated only ruling from ten to five. Also, the ayah is not there anymore. So this is the first type of what? Abrogation. In Arabic it's called an-nasakh. Allah says in the Quran in chapter two, مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِهَا Whatever we abrogate from the Quran or make you Muhammad, وسلم, forget it, we will replace it or bring something that is better than it. 
Second type of abrogation, though it's not our topic, but it's important that you know. The abrogation of the ruling while the verse is still there. For example, O you who believe, do not approach prayer while in the state of intoxication. This was in the beginning of time. You can drink but and be wasted. When it's time of prayer, you should be sober. So Allah is permitting them to drink only in this, until the verse that abrogated it and said, no, it's completely prohibited for you to drink, whether you're sober or drunk, whether you're praying or not praying. So this is a second type of abrogation. But this is not our topic as stated before. So the five sucklings is what is applied at the moment. It's a difference of opinion because some scholars say, no, even one meal would be enough. Others say, no, three meals. And this is a choice of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him and other companions. But the most authentic opinion that is backed by the Sahih Hadith, that five known sucklings make a child prohibited and it makes him a son of the woman or the daughter of the woman who suckled him or her. Understood, inshallah. Now, what are more to know about this? Well, they have a terminology that states that the milk of the male, what is meant by the milk of the male? Does a, a male have milk? I said, no, 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 listen, know the consequences, know the circumstances, know everything that's related, then you understand. When a woman suckles, 99.9% .9 she is not a virgin. Not only she's married, no, even a married woman would not have milk. But 99.9% .9 she is married and gave birth. And this is when a woman has milk. So they say the milk that came to that woman, whose milk is it? She said, it's mine. But who did it result from? It resulted from the man. Therefore, the milk is the man's milk in this sense, which means that if a man has two wives, one wife breastfed a girl and the other wife breastfed a boy, when they grow up, can they marry? Although they suckled from different mothers, their father is one. And therefore they cannot, and this is what is known as the milk of the male, or in Arabic, Lebanul Fahl. So you have to put this in mind when we study the rest of the hadiths, so that it would make it clear for you how this thing takes place. Now, the most important thing in determining which is halal and which is haram, because we get this question so often. A man says, I suckled with this girl and I'm interested in marrying her sister. Is this permissible or not? What do you think? People say no. People say yes. To determine before answering, you have to, first of all, imagine the situation. What makes this haram or halal? What makes this mahram or non-mahram? The child that suckled, how can we say that he is this or that? Only by knowing the source of milk. What makes him mahram is the milk. So we have to look at who consumed the milk and who's related to the milk. I have this brother, Abdullah, and I have this girl, Fatima. They all suckled from the same woman. Any woman, whether Abdullah's mother or Fatima's mother, or a third party, no problem. I have no problem with that. As long as they suckled from a woman, all her children are her brothers ancestors, their siblings. The husband of that woman is their father. Understood? The uncles of this woman are their grandfathers. The siblings of the woman who suckled is their uncles. The sisters are their aunts. Understood? So now these two are the daughter of the woman who suckled. Now if Abdullah is interested in marrying Fatima, is it permissible? She is his sister. He cannot marry her. If Abdullah is interested in marrying Fatima's youngest sister, Khadija, 
Is this permissible? Now, the woman who suckled does not relate to both of them. So now they are brothers and sisters. Abdullah is interested in marrying Khadija, the younger sister. Khadija, did she suckle from that woman? No, she suckled from her own mother. Therefore, she is a sister of Fatima, but she is not related at all to Abdullah. They can marry. Reverse this. Fatima has gotten a proposal from Ahmed, the eldest brother of Abdullah, or the youngest, or the twin. It doesn't make any difference. They did not suckle with each other, complete strangers. The marriage can take place. When there is a problem, when the woman who suckled is the mother of one of them. So if the mother of Abdullah suckled Abdullah and Fatima, Fatima is automatically the sister of all siblings. She cannot marry anyone who's related to the mother, the woman that suckled them. But Abdullah is in the clear. He can marry any of her sisters if he wish. So I hope this answers some of the problems. Once you relate this, because when you get a, an issue, when you get a question, people tend to confuse you, say, I suckled this woman from uh, so-and-so, and I want to marry her sister. Is it permissible? So the first question is, who suckled you? Who is the woman? She says, X, Y, Z. Is she related to that woman you want to marry? I said, no. But I suckled with her sister or with someone. Then there is no problem with that. Now, if he comes to me and say, I was breastfed by a woman, me and this woman, this girl, and we are now brothers through suckling. She got married, she has children. I'm interested in marrying her daughter. Is this permissible? Why? He will be the uncle of those children. Yes, that is quite true. He is the uncle. He cannot marry his niece. And the mother of this girl is his sister. So now once you know the origin, once you know that the milk is the problem, you solve everything and everything becomes easy for you. This is all the time we have. Until we meet next time, fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.